team, welcome to 3 Motorsport. I'm Clint Brown. Glad you could join us tonight. And coming up, we've got round two of the World Rally Champs from the ice and snow of Sweden and round three of the New Zealand Street Skills Champs from Otago. And good news, too, for Kiwi motorheads. Subaru have announced a three times New Zealand winner Colin McRae of Scotland will return in August for the Smoke Free Rally of New Zealand. And Sweden's Kenneth Eriksson will partner McRae in the two car Subaru team. So that's great stuff. And you, too, can be a winner with 3 Motorsport. Each week, we're giving away a $1,000 smoke-free Rally of New Zealand prize pack. Plus, all the entries go into the draw to win a sensational Suzuki Bellano GTX. And our first winner is... Now, let's check out how you can win. Tonight's prize is the Ultimate Rally Spectator Kit, valued at over $1,000, consisting of the Heller Power and Light Kit, a Heller Endurance Battery, and a pair of Comet 500 driving lights. New Zealand Street Schools Rally Championship gear with polar fleece, gear bag, water bottle and cap. The Metro Group phone kit consisting of a Motorola phone, three months free rental and a $50 Metro phone card. A gold spectator pack for the 1997 Smoke Free Rally of New Zealand comprising of gold pass, kit bag, official program and maps, cloth badge, posters and stickers. And all calls go into the draw to win this exciting Suzuki Bellano 1.8 GTX hatch. Featuring CD player, ABS, dual airbags, stylized body kit and alloy wheels, valued at $26,000 on the road. Just call 0900 6556 and answer this week's question. What make of car does Colin McRae drive in the World Rally Champs? Children ask your parents first, calls cost 99 cents per minute. So good luck with your chance of winning with three motorsport. Well, round three of the New Zealand Street Skills Championship, the Rally of Otago, was the first chance for all the top drivers from both the North and the South Island to get together. Defending champion Joe McAndrew was back with a new Subaru Impreza. Also moving into the Group A scene from Group N, Canterbury's Greg Graham and another Subaru. So the battle had been fuelled between the Subarus and the Mitsubishi Lancers. We're talking about the Evo 3s and the Evo 4s. <laughs> Championship round three in Dunedin and joining the new Evolution 4s, Joe McAndrew returned with a new car and a new sponsor. He had missed round one of the championship, but a win here would put him back in the running for another New Zealand title. Well, we just want to keep running at the top in New Zealand and, um, you know, a few people out there try and knock us off, so um, we're the ones to aim for. So um, we've got a new car here and a new flash paint job and Fleet Link behind us, so we're feeling pretty confident that we've got um, good backing and um, now someone to work for. Now, the old Legacy was a big car. You had to throw it around. What about this one, a tidier drive? Well, um, I've driven it very shortly at a rally sprint, um, very short, and I found the thing um, really tail-happy, so... I don't know, this one could be more tail happy than the Legacy, you know. I, I can't imagine you driving a car that isn't tail happy, Joe. Yeah, well, that's really um, what it's about. I'm an entertainer and I'm out there to go and throw the car around as best I can and um, drive it as quick as we can. Last week we saw the New Zealand debut of the Mitsubishi Evo 4. At Dunedin, Rally Art New Zealand was showing off their car. The car was uh, finished on Saturday. Um, Sunday we did 100 k's and, uh, of testing in Maramura and it felt really good, really, really happy with it. Um, it's a whole different car, obviously, and different characteristics, so um, we don't know how quick we're going. Um, we won't know until we can, can compare times with the other guys, and, and that'll happen tonight and tomorrow, I guess, but no, very happy with the car. And Greg Graham had finally got his Group A spec, possum-born built Subaru Impreza, to the start line. I'm hoping to be competitive, obviously, and uh, but um, I haven't actually driven the car in, in true Group A form yet so it should be a bit of a bit of a learn i think um, the first four stages tonight i think i just behaved myself jeff argyle takes us on a ride around stage one a short four lap circuit around the warehouses greg graham shared the win with brian green and his evo four now the rally wouldn't be won here but it could be lost chris ramsey 
he drove only three laps before stopping and having to do another lap. It cost him 45 seconds and the chance of exclusion for passing twice through a control point. Rally used roads on the southern coast before returning to Dunedin for the overnight halt. Saturday would see a mixture of fast public roads and twisty forest stages. Greg Graham took the lead on stage two, despite nearly turning off onto the wrong road. McAndrew was next. But he was suffering from a slipping clutch. There was no service until after the next stage, so he would have to nurse the car and hope it could be fixed. Ross Meekings had led this rally in 1996 before crashing. Once again, he was charging. Third equal here. Marty Rostenberg led the championship at the start of the rally, but a small mistake on stage two would drop him down to eighth place on the road. The damage was light in the car and didn't seem to affect his confidence. Yeah, we uh, went off in stage two, uh, tightening right-hander and the back of the car came out and clouded the bank and did a bit of damage there, but nothing too serious, didn't slow us down very much. Reese Jones was easing into his new Evo 4, not yet having the confidence with the car to charge for the lead. But Todd Bowden and his group in Evo 4 was right on the pace third equal on this stage, he would maintain that pace throughout the rally. John Silcock was the leading South Islander, but a gear selection problem was beginning to occur in his Mazda. Stuffy Holmes' group and Impreza seems quiet on the smooth gravel, but on stage three, he's right on the move making up eight places to seventh overall. But his headlights tell a sad story. First, it's Joe McAndrew, stopped halfway up a hill. His clutch burnt out. Then, Rhys Jones, stopped by a blown turbo hose. Jones would repair the car overnight and then run it as the triple O course opening car on the Saturday. So after stage three, it's Graham in the lead. Jeff Argyle is 36 seconds behind, with Marty Rostenberg a further five seconds down on him. But there are ominous signs for Graham as steam escapes from the engine at the service point. Absolutely given it heaps. Yeah, I hope they don't check the, um, he's got a tail cow on the, yeah, if they check it, it's round at eight. The battle for Formula 2 once again featured Stu Warren and Dean Buist in the Toyota Corollas. Warren was the fastest in the night by just seven seconds. Buist seemed more cautious, maybe waiting to charge in the daylight. showdown with Daihatsu didn't eventuate when Dave Strong had gearbox problems on stage three, losing a minute. Also in trouble, Jason West, whose Corolla was struggling through the stage with a flat tyre. We uh, come over a brow of the right-hander, didn't quite get round it, straight through a fence. Just got tangled up in the fence and couldn't get out. Flat tyre. Thought we'd drive out rather than uh, change, stop and change it. 
Only two Suzuki Valenos came south. Paul Fredrickson taking a cautious start in his Datacom car. While Grant Aitken was welcoming the chance to run on the roads of his old hometown. Ashton Wood had his escort in front, while Chris West was putting up another strong challenge for the Street Skills Scholarship. Stage four, Greg Grimes brakes glow red, but his engine is terminal. This would be the end of his rally. That put Jeff Argyle into the lead as the cars headed back to Dunedin. The view from Marty Rostenberg shows the tough nature of the stage, which would once again be used at the end of the rally. traditional Dunedin send-off from the Octagon as the competitors faced eight more daylight stages. Now Dunedin is famous for its fast open roads which suddenly change in character. Drivers have to be ready for sudden surprises, even in Jeff Argyle's case, the occasional wildlife. Six saw the lead seesaw between Argyle and Rostenberg. Here on five, it was Rostenberg who was throwing the car into the corners. And it's um, you know, really fast and throwing the car sideways into the corners in fifth gear and just standing on it and hoping that we've got enough grunt to pull out. So yeah, it's good fun, Jeff and I are having a ball. out and had moved up to third place. The Evo 4 seemed well suited to the conditions. Good roads, um, still dangerous, you know, still crests and still lots of traps though, but you, because you're going, you know, flat fifth, you can do it at a hundred, top of 175 in that, in that stage there, you know, and woo, look out. <laughs> so, lots of fun though, you know. So, I mean, we got, uh, you know, Marty by two on that last stage and Reese, I think Ross did a 48 and we did a 11th for John Silcock, there was frustration as his second gear became unusable, but he was still holding fourth place. It's not going to go away, it's not going to get any better, we've just got to make the most of, of what we've got and um, unfortunately there's a few times we could have used it in the last stage. We've dropped some time, but overall I'm pretty happy with the way we're going actually. West has been a sensational addition to street schools rallying, second fastest here in his 1800cc Lancer. But Barry Robertson was the real sensation, fastest on both stage 5 and 6 in his Pulsar. Ross Meckings was losing ground with a spark plug problem, which would get worse through the stage. Stumpy Holmes held 7th and was the first Subaru in the field. Craig Marshall was making a move up after a cautious start of the night. Chris Ramsey had plenty of time to make up after his stage one disaster and here, well he just pushed it a little too far. Argyle cruises through with no problems, but only a five-second lead. 
Rostenberg is also having no trouble after his stage two off. He's second, but Ross Meekings has dropped to seventh place. Well, actually, we dropped a spark plug in the uh, second stage this morning, and unfortunately, it was a 17k long stage, and we only did four k's on four cylinders, and the other 13 k's on three. So, I think we dropped about 30 seconds in there. It's put us behind the eight ball a wee bit, but just makes it interesting for the afternoon, doesn't it? Stage seven. Nargyle is on a charge. These wide country roads are ideal conditions for the Evo 4. He's able to keep the car on the smooth, straight path and wins the stage. here but you can see how hard he's trying but listen too to the encouragement from co-driver Jeff Judd as the road tightens up six. left six through the intersection Ross Meekings is running on four again, trying to make up time, but it was obvious that he was never going to make the corner. Well, obvious to everyone, but our cameraman Pete, that is. That was close, and yep, the former champ Brian Stokes was enjoying our performance. You could say he was staked. Now check out Barry Sexton, perfect lines through the corner on his Subaru. But it was Stumpy Holmes, Group N version, which was still the lead Subaru, now sixth overall. Ramsey had made steady progress and was now fourth overall. John Sulcock was still trying hard to stay with the leaders, but would crash out on stage eight. Ashton Wood was looking for a good finish in the ex-Brian Stokes Ford Escort, but here he was still only the third South Islander, 12th overall. Todd Bowden had been surprised at his early pace and was now closing to within three seconds of Rostenburg. And also closing, Craig Marshall, up to fifth overall. Brian Green is leading Group A in the championship, but had a slow start in Dunedin. Day was having a good run on his Impreza, but how's this? He nearly cleans us up again. Lee Master is another mainlander. He's taken up the Street Schools New Zealand Championship, but his race would end further down the road with a barrel roll. Formula 
two battles still rage between Warren and Buist. For Stu Warren, this was good experience for his forthcoming drive for Kia in China. But the real pleasure was finally getting the better of Buist. It's the first time any pressure's gone on him for a couple of years. And first time we run decent tyres on the car, so yeah, it's good going good. We've got a wee bit of time on him now, but today it might be different. We'll just see how it goes. see the determination in Dean Buist as he pulls out an eight second lead over Warren on this stage. In the Belenos, it was a case of novice caution over experience. Paul Fredrickson was coming to grips with the high speeds of these open roads, while Grant Aitken was enjoying pushing his red baby to the limit. Dave Owen had the points lead of the South Island Street School Scholarship and was still on target to take it away on this rally. Four case to the finish. But at the front, Marty Rostenberg was about to find out about those deceptive Dunedin corners. Keep it up. Yeah, keep going. Go. Back around that way, that's it. So Argyle stays in front, but Bowden's now second. Rostenberg third, but slipping back to Ramsey and Marshall. Stumpy Holmes, meanwhile, loses sixth place to Chris West. Stage nine, and Jeff Argyle is flying. In just two rallies, he's quickly come to grips with the Evo 4, but the car still has some teething problems. Huge crowd is enjoying the mild Otago weather as Todd Bowden storms through, maintaining second place. Chris Ramsey now has the lead in his sights. After Friday's disastrous start, he's just five seconds away from Bowden, but the possibility of exclusion still overshadows his drive. Pushing your way up the field now, Chris. Yeah, I think we are. Uh, not intending to be there, but we just want to try and give it our best and uh, see where we go. But after leading earlier in the day, Rostenberg is struggling to make up the time lost in stage eight. There is a suspicion too of an engine problem, but the team keep on going as hard as they can. Craig Marshall now looks to be threatening Rostenberg, closing in 10 seconds at the end of stage 10. Another team doing well is Lewis Scott and Jane Black. Their aging Evo 1 Lancer is right on the pace, and they move from 9th to 5th by stage 10. Sexton is still the lone Subaru among the top 10 cars, sitting in 7th place. Mike Turfus is the top Otago driver in 8th spot, and with a little local knowledge, he's putting on a great display for the crowd. was still charging, but this would be his last stage, stranded with broken wheel bearings on stage 10.
Harpy Holmes was making up good time on stage nine when this happened. They were forced to stop and change the tyre, but drove on, inspired to win stage ten. going back to Stu Warren, now holding a 20 second lead after Buis had an off-road excursion. But the yellow Corolla was still there, waiting for any mistake by Warren to get back in front. Dermot Martin was in third place in Formula 2, happy to let the two chargers out front take the risks. Dave Strong was making a recovery after his gearbox problems of the previous night. In the Belenos, Paul Fredrickson was again being pressured by Grant Aitken. Aitken's experience really showing through and he would go on to take maximum points again. David Owen took out top points of the Street School Scholarship which will now take him to the smoke-free rally in August. Meanwhile, Ramsey had pushed in front of Bowden by the penultimate stage. Rostenberg had dropped back to fifth with the engine low on boost, but he still collected valuable points. Those points went up when Craig Marshall crashed out on the final corner of the rally and dropped out of fourth place. Another in trouble was Mike Turfus. His car had a slowly deflating front tyre, which ultimately caused him to crash out on the last corner as well. Brian Green came through in fifth, having overtaken Lewis Scott, whose gearbox had expired over the last two stages, dropping him back to ninth. Duffy Holmes finished 8th, but collected 3rd in Group N. Peter Day in a Group A Subaru was 7th overall. And Ashton Wood finished 6th and 1st Mainlander home, also taking the lead in the Mainland Series. Barry Sexton had moved into 4th by the rally end, despite a broken exhaust. Todd Bowden had his best finish, winning the Group N class and finishing second overall. Jeff Argyle had driven well, but was pipped across the line by Ramsey in the finish. However, as expected, Ramsey was disqualified for his first stage error, but he'd still proved the point. First win for an Evolution 4 in New Zealand, you must be happy with that. Oh yes, it's a very positive way to start our national championship after the disappointment in Gisborne. You know, we've got to get more speed, it's down to that. If we play around with a diff a bit and um, get myself into the gear a bit more, we'll be right. So Marty Rostenberg retains the championship lead as well as Group N. Brian Green is first in Group A, but look at the battle between Argyle and Sexton. Grant Aitken is the clear leader in the Suzuki Bolenos.